everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's live stream. We are back after some technical difficulties last week, but we are really excited to be here to share the amazing work that our second years have been working on. Uh, it's like our second chance redemption. So hopefully everything tonight goes really smooth. Uh, we've sorted out all the problems that we had last week, so we should be all good. Um, my name's Emma. I'm the event officer here in Canberra, um, and also I work with online, uh, but we've got some groups here from Sydney and from Canberra. So all of us are in lockdown at the moment. So this is like the lockdown live stream. Um, but they're going to be here to kind of go through some of the work that they've been doing at the moment and also to answer any questions you guys have about the projects they're working on or anything like that. So feel free to chuck that in the chat um, as we'll be taking questions throughout the night. Um, we might just start off by introducing ourselves, um, so obviously I've introduced myself, but Sydney guys, do you want to take it first and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm a game artist at Sydney, working on Demon King. Hi, I'm Elric. I'm a game designer, also in Sydney, and also working on Demon King. Awesome. Right. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a game artist from Canberra. Hello, I'm also Hannah, and I'm also a game artist in Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, we'll start off easy for you guys. Do you guys want to go around, uh, we'll start with the Sydney guys first, and do you want to tell me a little bit why you were interested in going into games, just as a starting point, just so we can see why you wanted to do this with your life? Yeah, um, so I, I'm an artist, so I guess I've been drawing since a young age. Uh, I've always been drawing lots of game ideas and sort of like doing little tiny sketches of game ideas and uh, just doing all kind of art stuff. And I sort of knew that I slowly wanted to get into that industry. And then I went to a talk um, by Matt Estella um, and talking about being a games and VFX artist. And he said like the core pillars are art, tech and people. And I'm like, oh, I like all those three things. So. Um, I decided to go to AIE and be a game artist. Awesome. Um, yeah, personally, I um, grew up doing a lot of creative activities. Um, those were the subjects that I was good at in school, the only ones that I was good at in school. Um, and uh, yeah, from there, I spent many, many years working in retail until I finally got bored and frustrated um, with what is a very difficult industry to work in. Um, and yeah, I started writing and publishing D and D modules, um, just kind of as a hobby, and really, really enjoyed that. Um, and from there, found AIE and just kind of dived right into it, um, full commitment. Awesome. Um, for me, well, I kind of stum I kind of stumbled into it. One of my friends was actually going to do the Cert three at um, for Game Art in at Canberra and I decided to tag along and the teacher there was a person called um, Caesar Brando amazing amazing man I owe him my whole entire career and he helped me and made me see like how cool this sort of stuff is and then I just suddenly just was like damn this is amazing I'm gonna keep doing it and then I'm here now <laughs> yes yeah, Caesar's awesome uh, yeah, so yeah, I've been drawing since I was young, and I just thought like, you know, I like art, and you know, doing like game art is a good way to take art and like do something practical with that. So yeah, and yeah, I just like video games too, so it was a good match. Definitely. Awesome. Well, we might do a bit of an overview here while I've got both groups here. Um, we might do a little bit about how this subject that we're doing actually works. So if anyone doesn't know, this is part of, so these two groups have been working as part of our major game project. So they're doing um, the game side of AIE. And in this subject, we do a little bit of a collaboration between the different streams. So they actually make something. But Sydney guys, do you want to explain it better as you guys are undertaking it at the moment? Um, yeah, so uh, we've been put into small teams. Um, ours is seven people. Um, so we've got three artists, two programmers, and two designers. Um, and yeah, from there, we're basically given a task to come up with three ideas. Uh, so we come up with the whole stack and note it down. Um, and yeah, then we basically needed to go through the pre production steps, um, making a prototype, figuring out game mechanics and art style, that kind of thing. Um, and then we had to do an industry showcase, which was really cool. Um, so we, there was a panel of 
uh, people from local studios here in Australia, and we basically pitched our concept to them, got some feedback from them, um, and yeah, put our names out there as well, which was really cool. Um, just get seen. Awesome. And yeah, now we're full on production. <laughs> awesome. And at the end of this subject, you guys get to show off your games to, again, more industry in our industry showcase, yeah. which is also a really awesome opportunity. And this subject runs on all of our campuses, I should mention that as well. So even if you're looking at, you're not looking at the Sydney or the Canberra campus, this subject is run on all of them. So you get to do this as well. Well, let's just jump straight into it. We're going to have on the guys from Demon King first, uh, and they're going to go through a little bit about their game. So let's just jump in. Hi guys. So let's just start off with the basics. <coughs> what is your project actually about? Cool. Yes. Yeah. So the game's called Demon King. Um, we built it to be an accessible multiplayer King of the Hill style game set in a hellish landscape. Um, and the game is kind of built on the core pillars of emergent teamwork and shifting of power. And it basically just tried to create sort of a unique multiplayer dynamic and gameplay with these things in mind. Um, and we've just kind of built all around that as our foundation. Was it your like number one pick idea when you started out or did you have a few you were tossing around? No, definitely not. We, <laughs> we brainstormed about like 61 one-liner game concepts and like, really slowly went through all of them and filtered them down. Um, we had a lot of uh, decision making and talking between each other. Um, but eventually we did settle on Demon King, kind of because we liked the multiplayer. It fit what our programmers wanted to do. Um, the level design sort of fit what our, des our designers wanted to do. Um, and it had lots of characters, which is what uh, our artists are sort of focused on. Um, so we mainly chose it in the end because it suit our team, really. Yeah. yeah. Once we once we figured out what um, what our team wanted to do and what we were best at, um, then we just tried to do, well, we basically narrowed it down to those things and then designed around the mechanics of um, consuming and evolving. Um, and we were inspired by a lot of uh, two D games like the Agar and Deep IO games, and tried to combine that with a third person multiplayer shooter genre um, to create something entirely unique. So it was a really fun process. Awesome. And you guys mentioned before you've got seven people working in your team. Were you guys like always together or did you like some people like, because I know here in the camera we like switch projects a lot of the time until you actually find the right group. Um, did you guys like have the right group to get go? We actually, uh, four of us developed and published a completely separate game together in our spare time. Um, and we published that a couple of months ago. Um, and from there, there we kind of, get it. yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, Sneaky plan. And yeah, once, once we kind of saw that we could make something and publish it commercially really, really quickly with that team, um, then we were kind of like, Hey, let's, do you guys want to do the major together? And yeah. then, um, yeah, we got the, the other best people in the school together to make up the rest of our team. <laughs> um, and now we, now we have an excellent team and we work together really, really well. That's awesome, because that's my next question. So you guys obviously are from different streams, uh, different streams, sorry. What are all the different streams doing at the moment and what's it like working together? Um, so at the moment, uh, our artists are working through uh, modeling, animation, rigging, and kind of um, polishing, I guess, the core of what those are and what they're gonna look like, art style, that sort of thing, getting that all together, um, making sure everything works from a technical perspective. Um, the designers, we're, we're actually just starting uh, testing, so we're trying to do really, really early testing and lots of it, um, just to make sure that uh, our user experience is on point. Um, and also lots of level design, and the programmers um, have, have made most of the mechanics already, which is really cool. We have, we have the core of everything in there, pretty much. Um, so they're now working awesome. on polishing, bug fixing, that kind of thing, um, and also sort of extended features that, that we'd like to add in. Yeah. Awesome, it's, cool. It's, it's really cool um, working with the other streams. I think it's been, it's fun sort of, we've developed like a way where we can like encourage each other, but also challenge each other at the same time. So like um, someone will tell me, maybe try this thing with the art and it will be a programmer telling me that. Or I'll be like, hey, how about we try this game mechanic idea? Um, and we've sort of been able to like combine our various expertise and different like mindsets um, to sort of encourage each other, but also like um, see if we can make each other better 
uh, because of our different mindsets from being from different streams. Um, yeah. Really good. Awesome. What... Just recently, I actually had a perfect example. Alex here um, suggested a little, a little change in the way the scoring system works um, that kind of flipped the whole, the whole end game dynamic on its head in a really fun way. Um, and we've gone with it, we've already implemented it. Awesome. Well, do you want to take us through what we're looking at on the screen here? Um, it looks like it's a bit of your test gameplay. <laughs> take it away, Alex. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I guess what you see at the moment, uh, definitely very uh, block out, but um, our goal as artists, designers, and programmers is to like get everything in the game as quick as possible. So it, it can look kind of bad. Riggers can be okay and the animations can be okay. But as long as it's in the game, that's sort of what we're focusing on. Um, but yeah, at the moment, uh, you can see there's three different characters that you can be, um, and then someone's consuming another character. So we're consuming more, getting more points. Those three bars on the right are like how much you have for each evolution. Um, and yeah, that's sort of like getting to next evolution lines and that kind of thing. Yeah, and this level is um, the other designer, Alex Vieira has created this just again as a block out. It's all just kind of representative of shapes and style. Um, and we've designed around funneling, pushing players together to create encounters. Um, so that's what this level is. Have you done any player testing yet? Uh, plenty, plenty of internal testing amongst ourselves and with our uh, producer teacher, Jesse, as well. Um, but uh, yeah, first serious round of testing starts Wednesday next week. Is it is it hard making the multiplayer part of it? Or yes. has that have you encountered a few problems with that so far? Yes, it is a whole <laughs> a whole different programming challenge for the programmers and they've done an amazing job of researching um, best practice, best platform, um, and implementing that really quickly so we can test it. Um, and then same with design as well. Um, having AI to changes changes the design of the game entirely and um, having to think about other players as variables um, in the way that they interact with each other um, also presents a whole set of other design challenges so it's been really fun to work with as well. Awesome. Well, what are kind of the next step for the project? Because obviously you guys aren't completed yet. So do you want to take me through like what you guys are planning to do in the next like few weeks and towards the end of the project? Um, yeah, so, so as I said, next week is our, is our first um, stage of testing. We're going to do four, um, four rounds of QA testing um, for we're happy to, happy to call that, that main <laughs> testing stuff done. Um, and yeah, we're going to begin community engagement. We've already kind of started community engagement. We've got social media pages um, on all the major platforms. We've got a Discord group as well, which we're going to run some of our testing through too. Encourage, um, encourage some engagement there. Uh, as well as setting up a business entity so we can create a Steam page and actually publish commercially. Um, and we've done, ticked a lot of those boxes already. Now we just need to kind of, yeah, do a little bit more paperwork and we'll have that up and running quite quickly, I think. Um, awesome. And yeah, publishing commercially on Steam early next year, hopefully. Um, that's on top of our AIE requirements. <laughs> if, if anyone wants to sort of keep up with the game later, uh, definitely look up Demon King game. Uh, on Twitter or any other social media. Um, you can sort of see updates, maybe join our Discord, join in dis discussion, maybe join in testing or something. Um, awesome. Yeah, check it out. Uh, we did get a question through on Facebook and they were just wanting to know a little bit about uh, how the teachers have been involved in this subject uh, and what, how they've helped you guys. So do you guys want to touch on that? Yeah, we have. Um, so Jesse is our um, is our teacher slash producer at the moment. Um, so he checks in, checks in with us multiple times a day, um, especially at the start of the week, just to kind of go, right, what's, what, are your, what are your tasks that you've set out to complete this week? Um, and how are you gonna go about doing them? Do you have any barriers, that sort of stuff? Um, and we've also had input from uh, the other teachers, uh, second year design and art teacher, giving us lots of input as well, and plenty of feedback. Um, but yeah, by, by this stage, we're kind of just bouncing ideas off of them and getting bits of feedback. Um, we've, we've learned everything we can from them. Um, They're just there to guide and give advice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, more like mentors. They're doing a good job of it. Yeah, yeah. cool, awesome. Well, we might come and touch back in with you guys later, um, but we might now move over to our other group. Uh, yeah, wave goodbye. <laughs> uh, so I'll grab the Hannahs on screen. Our dream team of Hannahs. 
Hi guys. Hello. Hello. How are you guys going? We're doing all right. We're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Well, let's start off where we started off with the Demon King group. Um, do you guys want to just take us through a bit of an overview of what your game is and what the storyline is and all that sort of yeah. stuff? All good. Um, so we are making a game called Bad Luck Black Cat, which is a top-down 3D farming um, adventure game for the PC. Whereas, of course, you've seen as the promotional art is a black cat, and you have to battle and like try to fix your um, bad luck along the way of farming and things like that. Yeah, just like farming and stuff to get money to like trade to people for things that can improve your bad luck. Awesome. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm a huge fan of the idea as a big cat advocate myself. Um, <laughs> and I think that your design is adorable for your little cat. I was like, oh my gosh, I want that cat. Um, so, do you guys want to go through what the process of like coming up with this idea was? Um, like, did you have a few other ideas? Were you maybe involved in a few other groups? And now you guys have settled into this one? Um, <clears throat> when initially coming up with the actual idea, um, I it just came out in the blue. I do a lot of thinking through um, drawing and doing all that sort of stuff, going through different thought processes while drawing and sketching. And I had just drawn this um, black, um, black cat with a straw hat on its head and I was just like, oh, that's really cute. <laughs> what if I make a whole entire game about this one bad, um, cat that's down on its luck? And so it sort of stemmed out from there. I actually got Hannah to help me with grounding my ideas a lot because my brain is not very um, easy to work with. <laughs> it likes throwing out really big and bold ideas. And Hannah had managed to ground me a lot. Like She's done a lot of amazing concepts, one of which you will see on the screen. And then we've just been developing it from there. Awesome. Cool. Um, so what if the, so you guys obviously are both from the art side, which is of course really huge in this like game, but what have the other streams been doing, the designers and the programmers? They've been helping a lot. Like the programmers, they've, well, the programmers have been like structuring everything and putting it together and making everything Hi. work, yeah, which is absolutely like amazing. I am Dalen Me. Oh no. There we go. Oh, no. I turned the audio off. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to um, hear yourself. <laughs> but um, the designers have been putting together pretty much the whole entire, like the economy, the, um, we've been getting quest lines and the story and everything like that. And they've been a very big um, help with actually fully producing and making this game, even though what you've seen in front of you is actually just the pre-production. We've been working behind the scenes from this sort of stuff and making it so much better than it is here. Yeah, this is just the pitch video that you guys did um, to like share your idea to actually like get it off the ground, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, yeah. It's, we did a couple weeks of pre-production where we went through and just did the basic ideas. We did sketches, concepts, we started figuring things out and yeah. it was, and it just, yeah, stemmed from there. You're awesome. Now, what do you, so you, we have moved on from the pre-production stage, yes? Yes, we have. We're yeah. currently a couple of weeks into development. Um, mm -hmm. We have got a block out of our main level and we've got things like that, but sadly I hadn't been able to get any of those photos and been able to give it to you on time for this. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It takes a long time to get all that stuff together. Um, so do you guys want to run us through what you're doing at the moment? Yes, yeah, so at the moment we're currently creating um, we're creating all the UI, we're creating all the art assets. Um, the programmers are working very hard with actually implementing a lot of the um, fundamental stuff so like the farming, the day-night system and everything like that. Um, and we've been also working, um, one of our people that have been working, has been working really hard and we are uh, called Monica. She's on our group, she's another artist. She's been actually making the character model, which is now probably oh. integrated into the game. Is it this one? And which you see yeah. there, it's rigged yeah, and everything works. It looks pretty good in the game. He's the Yeah, and I've just been working on like high priority assets and stuff and other Hannah has been working on like plants and UI and all that. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Um, so, uh, did you have any, like, inspiration, because this is such a unique style of the game, did you have any, like, inspirations, um, from other games that you, like, sourced from? 
I did. Um, I actually have been following a game that's in early early alpha called Palia, which is done by a ton of X Blizzard and X other big studios. And it's a farming community farming sim. It's a big MMO, and they're just just an early alpha. And there's this character in the game. Forget the name completely because I'm terrible with names. But he is just a giant like golem robot with a straw hat, <laughs> and I got really inspired by that. And it was just I thought it was really cute, and I was just like, yeah, I, it was a huge inspiration for the game. Awesome, cool. Well, um, do you guys want to take us through what the next like steps are for you guys? Um, like, are you going to do player testing? Um, like, where are you going from here? Um, at the um, moment, we've actually got an itch.io yeah. page. Oh, awesome. If you want to say what you're going to say, Anna? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and like, yeah, over the ne- we're just going to like keep going with the project over the next, well, like 10, 13 weeks. I, I can't even remember which week we're in right now. But um, yeah, we're just going to like keep going with it, you know, do player testing and all that. And yeah, just flesh it out and develop it and get I it know- out there. I know here in Canberra we're working with CIT as well to do some music and sound stuff. Are you guys going to uh, be yes. involved in that? Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah they've already um, come on, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we've got three, um, we've got three um, audio people just chilling in our Discord server helping us and they just came in this week, so this is their first proper week with us, which is really cool. Do you have any like inspiration for where you are, like what sounds and what music you want in the background? Yeah, um, we've take, um, a lot of inspirations um, come from Stardew Valley, um, yep. but we've given them free reign to do a lot of stuff um, to do with the music, so they awesome. can they just feel the vibe of the game. Really. Awesome. Cool. Um, so I forgot to ask, like, what is it actually like working with the other streams, um, like working with the programmers and the designers? Um, is this like your well, I, I know it's not your first time, but do you want to like talk about what it's like actually being in a project where you're relying on other people? It's um, nice. Yeah, it's like um, really good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go bottom <laughs> Hannah <Okay>. first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really good. And like, yeah, so we're using Discord for, you know, just like to chat with other people. So it's like really accessible for all of us, even in lockdown. Because we're all in like the same Discord call all day, all day, so it's easy to, you know, access communication with each other. And yeah, it's just good to work with the people. Yeah. Awesome. Are you guys using Unreal Engine or Unity for this one? We had a question in the chat. We're using Unreal Engine because we said so. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we um, we've been we've been using Unity for the past two years. We um. When we decided which engine we were going to go for, we wanted to try something new, and yeah. that was Unreal. So we wanted to learn how to make um, and use Unreal, and it would be a challenge for all of us to learn how to use the workflow for that. Definitely. We always like to challenge ourselves and push before the things. Um, so you guys, we do have at the end the industry showcase. Are you excited for that, like to show your game off to, well, when it's all like spick and span, to show it off to industry guests? 100%. <laughs> We're excited for that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, let's bring everyone back on and we can answer a few questions from the chat and also some ones that I have for myself. So let's bring everyone back in. One sec, I've got to unmute the boys. There we go. Hello! Hello. We're all back. Awesome. Well, um, so anyone who's in the chat at the moment, this is your opportunity to ask any questions that you have uh, for everyone in the group. But I thought I'd start out with one of my own. Um, And we'll start off with the Canberra guys first. Do you want to tell me about like a surprising challenge that has actually come up already in this project and something that you didn't really expect that would be a problem, but may have been one? Um... For us, uh, network multiplayer was a really cool challenge, um, especially for the programmers. Um, but they, like, as I said before, they tackled it really, really well. Um, multiplayer level design has also been a really cool challenge. Just thinking about things like line of sight, um, how many players there are, and how they use the space. So, it was, um, using funneling and affordance techniques to kind of push players together and create encounters um, in an emergent way. Um, and yeah, putting a lot of thought into things like PvP combat, um, making it more accessible has been a cool challenge too. 
um, and using that as a unique selling point for our game. Uh, those are definitely the biggest ones from my point of view. Alex? Oh, yeah, um, I guess for us artists, uh, we have a lot of characters, um, like a lot, <laughs> yes. for a small game. Um, so what we have for that is having a dedicated character artist and a dedicated animator. Um, and we're only using four rigs, but sort of sharing the evolution lines along them. Um, but we still have 72 animations that we need to do. Um, so we're working hard on that. Um, <laughs> uh, we also have a, a big environment uh, as well. So we sort of need to use all the techniques like tiling textures and trim sheets and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, also make an art style that looks nice, but is optimized as well, yeah. Awesome. Canberra, did you guys have any problems? Uh, anything that you've kind of like didn't expect to come up, but there was like a good challenge? Um, I guess for one of the challenges that we're just currently going to be experiencing for a while is how big a farming game actually is. Because <laughs> um, when, I, when I was just like, oh yeah, this is going to be a cute little farming sim, why not? I did not think about like everything that's involved. <laughs> with yes. an actual farming game, so <laughs> that's a really big challenge that was yes. not that you have a, my head. You have a lot of, like, plants to draw. <laughs> Lots of yeah. different things. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, like, design and programming work yeah. to go into it. Mm. How, I forgot to ask, how system. big is, is your team, Canberra? How many people are working on it? Three programmers. It's like three. eight three people, Three programmers, I think. three artists, and two designers. Awesome. So yeah. 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 Yeah, cool. It's a pretty good sized team. Um, well, I wanted to ask, like, what is the proudest thing you guys have, like, done so far with the game? I mean, obviously, you'll just probably top that when it's actually completed. But what's, like, something that you're like, I'm super proud that I was able to complete that so far in the project? Who are you asking? Uh, we'll go with Canva first. We'll go the opposite way. All right. Let's okay. go. Well, okay. Um, yes. I guess, oh, okay. I think so, we can like, say, I, we'll go bottom Hannah, top Hannah, yeah. and we'll, we'll go round in the queue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like, I'm pretty proud of, like, um, the texturing so far. We're doing, like, a hand-painted kind of texture. Yeah. And from what I've done so far, I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks beautiful, so you should be. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of cheesy to say this, but I'm really proud of my team with, like, getting all this stuff done. Um, so we've got the character, like, fully rigged and things like that. We still need to add like details and stuff to make each character unique, but that's been a really proud achievement that we've done so far. Um, my personal achievement is do doing the majority of the UI so far, which is really nice. It's actually seeing how the um, user interface interacts with the game is something that is actually really nice to see. <laughs> User interface is like always really cool. Like it, it's something that people often overlook, but it's like so important. Yeah, I love, cool. I love you. Why you? Sydney, guys, how about you? Um, I guess <laughs> sort of similar to Hannah. Uh, I, I'm really proud of how productive everyone's being. Like our character artist is just like making stuff constantly, and I'll be like, hey, can you like move that thing there? And she'll just do it and pretty much exactly the same with the animator he'll just like pumps out animations at amazing speeds uh, and i'll be like um can you like redo all the dragon animations because it didn't work in the game he's like okay cool i'll do it he's <laughs> like oh my god thank you so much you're here so that's probably my favorite part such a positive attitude yeah i think um just how quickly we've put everything together has been yeah. really really cool um really encouraging as well um i know like scope is always a huge part, a really important part of the production process, just making sure, like constantly thinking about how much you've got to do, what are you setting out to do, how much work it's gonna be. Um, and I feel like because we've had the opportunity to work together, most of us, we kind of have a bit of experience already. We, we kind of know what our scope is within our team um, and then being able to sort of stretch that a little bit for this project and kind of go, okay, we do want to be mindful of scope, but let's aim for something a little bit bigger. Um, and still kind of seeing that come to fruition has been really, really satisfying. Awesome. Um, we did just have a question that popped into the chat. What is it like with the cutting and limiting down to the final idea process? Any words of advice? <laughs> um, yeah, that was really hard for us, actually. Um, so as Alex mentioned before, we came up with 61 ideas. Um, and then 
it wasn't too hard to narrow that down to around 10 or so. Um, and then getting it down to three was a bit more of a challenge. Um, and then deciding between those last three ideas was, uh, I don't know how long, it took us like half a day or something like that. We tried like three different processes of ranking and valuing <laughs> them and trying to like convince each other which one's best and why not <laughs> sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so it takes time. I think we set aside a solid like two days or so just to get down to those last three ideas. Um, but yeah, it was a worthwhile process and we're really happy with what we ended up with. Yeah, I'd, I'd also add to that, like um, having someone be the person who's like, no, don't do that, that's so much stuff. And then having another person who's just like, this idea, that idea, this idea, that idea, and then having them yeah. talk to each other and sort of communicate yeah. and you get that really nice balance of a really cool idea and then one that actually works well and you can yes. push it again. And be prepared to lose all of your ideas because you might get yeah. 50 <laughs> ideas and none of them will be chosen. Kill your baby. <laughs> It's an important skill to learn. Don't get like too attached to anything, as it can be chopped down, but yeah. made better. So, mm -hmm. oh, Canberra, have you, did you guys have any problems cutting down to your final idea? Um, during pre-production fa um, phase, we had a few ideas that was just like, yeah, this would be so cool to have in like the major production. But then we were just like, yeah, no, <laughs> this current, the scope is far too big for what we were originally thinking. And we don't have time. Like, we got rid of a lot of um, babies that we created and concepted. So yeah. it was fine. We, um, yeah. as, an art, as an artist, it's always a bit sad to see something go, but um, you know it's for the best. So you just let it die. <laughs> <laughs> just let it go. Oh, good. Well, we did have one question that was also submitted before the stream, and I think it's perfect for our, like both of our groups here as we're both in lockdown at the moment. But could you guys, do you guys have any words of advice for people who are like working in lockdown at the moment, keeping motivated and actually working as part of a team? Cameron, do you want to go first? We'll go top panel, right, then um, bottom panel. <laughs> Oh wait, me? I yeah. think I think we're in the same same Top brain um, brainwave, um, Hannah. It's where we're sitting in a Discord yeah. and we're actually always talking to each other. Yeah. And we're all um, yeah. the majority of the time we're sharing um, sharing screens and watching people work and do their thing. And it's constantly talking between the um, the streams as well, so that we're all getting motivated and talking together and just doing stuff. Communication. Yeah, and that way it's kind of like kind of like sitting in the same room, but it's just online. So we, we can all talk to each other and we can see each other's screens. Yeah. It's good. Definitely. How about you guys, Sydney? Um, I personally find um, doing a little bit every day is the best part for me, personally. It's not the same for everyone. Um, but I just find if I set myself really big goals, they just feel so overwhelming um, and I can be um, kind of hit by a wall by them really quickly. Uh, so yeah, I just try to do a little bit every day, even on my days off, um, and it just kind of keeps the ball rolling. Um, and yeah, it's it feels good to get things done, even if they're just small things, rather than just being stuck on one big thing for the longest time. Um, and iterating on it as well, instead of doing the final, the final pass of some design task, I'll do the first pass and I'll do it really, really quickly, and then I'll iterate on, on it a couple of times until it's good. Um, that gives me a chance to change it too. Uh, yeah, and also also doing it on Discord, we, we screen share pretty much the entire the entire class so that everyone can kind of look at what everyone's doing and ask questions about it and say, hey, that's not the right thing, make something else, that sort of stuff. Cool. Yeah. And, and I guess the, another thing in an online game, so that's pretty nice because you can still play it with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very true. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, um, just for our final question, um, because you guys are our second year, so obviously this is your final year at AIE, um, what are you guys, um, like, what are you wanting to do when you finish? Do you have any, like, goals? Are you wanting to go maybe into indie games, maybe try and get a job in a big studio? Like, what's what's your big hope? A <laughs> job, is please. A job. <laughs> Realistic. <laughs> We really want, job, we, want any our, job. We, we hope our game takes off so that we can just keep working on it a little bit longer, um, continue, continue it after AIE as well, um, make it more of a passion project. And long term, 
after getting lots of studio experience, maybe start a studio. Awesome. Cool. How about you guys, Canberra? Same thing. Job. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the ultimate end goal is a job. Um, me personally, I would love to get some experience with the AAA studio, um, especially with seeing how they do their workflows before I eat myself into indie. So I know from experience of how to do things in a AAA studio and then going down to an indie and it'll be just like, sup, indie now. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I think like yeah, like yeah, the AAA or indie, like either one, it would be a great experience to have, and yeah, just like mm -hmm. getting a job in general, and yeah, it's always nice it's having money. Yeah. It's always exciting. <laughs> well, I believe it's in all of you. Money. I'm sure that all of <laughs> you, you will have no problem finding a job. Uh, well, that's pr pretty much it for our live stream. Um, I'll just bring on our website. So if you guys are interested in any of the stuff we've been talking about today, we do have um, an event coming up shortly so you can find out more about the courses. Uh, so we've got the information evening that's coming up on the 15th of September. If you're interested in Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra or online, we're going to be running an online event. But if you're interested in the Adelaide campus, they're going to be running theirs on campus. Uh, so you can actually sign up for the event in there. Uh, we do live streams. In this month, we're going to be doing lives, like a lot more live streams, uh, focusing on some really cool stuff. So feel free to find them in our, oh, wait, there we go, in our workshop stuff. Uh, events here so you can see our live streams there so our next one is with Oscar Berman but I just wanted to thank all of you guys uh, for contributing to this live stream it was a rocky road last week uh, but thank you so much for your perseverance uh, and staying around it was so amazing to hear from all of you and we're so excited to follow on and see what you guys do next Thanks, Emma. No Thanks, problem. Emma. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, everyone, for joining us, and we will see you next week for our next live stream. Bye. 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 Bye.